Okay, so in the first video we uh, gave the definition of separability. Uh, so a, separa uh, a separable metric space is one in which there exists a set, a subset S, which doesn't necessarily need to be a proper subset, i.e. it could be the whole space itself, uh, which is uh, dense within the metric space XD. Uh, so that's the definition of separability of a metric space. And uh, we stated that all countable metric spaces, so metric spaces which have a countable number of elements uh, in them, in the set uh, X, uh, are going to be separable because you can just take the entire uh, set X as your set S, and that's certainly going to be dense within X. Uh, because if you take S closure, that's going to equal the whole space, which means it's going to be dense. So every set, every element of the set X is going to be a limit point uh, for the set X. Okay, uh, so now let's look at some less trivial examples. So uh, the first um, key example uh, is the real numbers and the rational numbers. So if you take your metric space to equal uh, the real numbers, uh, with the usual uh, Euclidean metric on it, so um, we'll define the distance between x and y uh, in the real line to be equal to the absolute value of x minus y, okay? Uh, and uh, if you then take as a subset the rational numbers, uh, which is certainly a proper subset of the real line because not all real numbers are rational numbers, uh, then this is a countable subset of the real line which is indeed uh, dense within the real line. So let's firstly discuss the countability. Uh, so uh, a way to show that the rational numbers are countable is if you um, make a great big table. Uh, so um, if you uh, put all the uh, natural numbers up here, one, two, in fact you need um, and zero. Uh, so you need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And down on the other side, uh, let's put all the other... Oh, wait, wait, we haven't put the negatives in, so we'll need the negatives as well. Uh, so let's put the negatives up here, so let's put them beside the positive ones. Negative 3, negative 4, etc. So the... Um, the integers are countable, so I'm going to list them in this way. You do 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 5, etc. And uh, you'll have negative 6 there as well, negative 7. Uh, and then in the denominator, all we need is the 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, all the positive ones. Firstly, because we don't need 0 in the denominator. And uh, secondly, because if we've got all the negatives up here, then we have all the negative rationals as well. So then what we do is we do uh, is we put every, is we write down every single rational. So we put uh, these as all the numerators and these as the denominators. So we have zero with a denominator one. Then we have one with a denominator one. We have minus one with a denominator one. So we're using this as the constant denominator and we're changing the numerator up here. So these are the numerators of our fraction and these are the denominators. And we can continue on. Uh, so uh, we'll get, oh dear, we'll get um, 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1, 3 over 1, etc. And we can go on. And then we'll have this next one. We'll have 0 over 2, uh, 1 over 2, uh, negative 1 over 2, uh, etc. And you go on and on and on. And you get every possible fraction in this way. Uh, because you're going to get every possible denominator with every possible numerator. You'll get all the negative fractions there because we've got all the negative numerators here. You do not need the negative denominators because that will be degenerate because we've got all the negative numerators. So those uh, multiply each of the fractions by uh, negative numbers. And again, uh, you have uh, you don't need zero in the denominator because you can't have a zero in the denominator. Okay, so a way of counting these fractions, if I just add a few more down here, uh, where, where, which other ones do I need? I'll need one over third. Uh, we'll put in negative one third as well, and two thirds we'll put in there, and uh, let's have zero over four for good measure. Okay, uh, so the way of counting them, what you have to do to prove some, a set is countable, what you have to prove is that it can be put in bijection with the natural numbers. The natural numbers are the set, this is the natural numbers, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. So the reason this is countable is that I can map one onto zero, I can map two onto one, I can map three onto negative one, four onto two, five onto negative two, so I can put them in bijection. And if you give me any integer, I can say, uh, I can tell you, I can give you a formula, in fact, uh, for which natural number uh, it's going to be uh, mapped onto. So say you want, um, well, um, in this case, uh, say you want, um, let's say, uh, negative 107. 
Uh, well, what I know is that first these zeros going on to one. Zero is the odd one out because it doesn't have a pair. So zero, uh, let's just get some coloured pens. Zero is being mapped onto one. Uh, then after that, all the pairs are being mapped onto uh, consecutive natural numbers here. Um, so let me get my other colour, uh, blue. So one and minus one are going on to two and three. And then two and negative two are going on to four and five. Okay, and the negative one always comes second. So if we want to work out what natural number it's going to be, uh, firstly we need to add on 1, and then we need to add on plus 2 times 107, because that's how many natural numbers you're going to get through, because for each, uh, for each uh, pair here, 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, uh, you're going to get for a pair, uh, the 2, you're going to get through 2 of these natural numbers, and you're going to have to go for 107 pairs to get to negative 107, which will be the second part of the 107th pair. So you, over here you'll have 107 and negative 107. And the number of pairs you have gone through is 107. So 2 times 107 plus the 1 for 0, that's your, uh, the number in which you'll get 107. And indeed, you can do that for whatever uh, natural number you like. You can use, uh, sorry, whichever integer you like. You give me any integer value, I can tell you what natural number it will be bijected with. So Every natural number will be uh, mapped onto some, uh, sorry, every integer will be mapped onto some natural number, uh, so they are therefore in bijection. Okay, uh, so if we want to now put the fractions in bijection, the way we can do it, and I'm sure you've probably seen this before, it's a very famous uh, construction, this. Um, it's one of the ones that is often done on popular, uh, popular mathematics programs. Uh, so, um, what you do is you map this one here, 0 over 1, you map that onto 1, so let me do more natural numbers, another natural number sequence, we have our natural numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay, and you will map that one onto 1, so that's the number 0, uh, let's just clarify, uh, then what you'll do is you'll uh, go on to the next one, so you'll go down, uh, let's go, let's say we go along, so uh, you'll go along to 1 over 1, uh, so you do this one next here, so you go along to this one, and you map that onto 1, so uh, that's going to be mapped onto, uh, sorry, it's going to be mapped onto 2 rather, it's going to be mapped onto the next natural number, so 0 has gone onto 1, uh, 1's gone onto 2, then we go down to this one, so we work our way through in this sort of triangle manner like this, so we're going to go through all of them like this. Um, so if I draw out the table again, and I just put um, arbitrary squiggles here to show the elements of this table, uh, the way you're going to work through it is you're going to go like this, as follows, in this sort of um, lattice-like way. Okay, and basically, oh dear, not like that, you're going to go to this one next over here. Uh, and you're going to go through all of the diagonal lines like that and sort of snake back through. And you will get every single element in this table. The problem is you're going to get degeneracies because here, even on this third element, we've already got a degeneracy because 0 divided by 2 is the same as 0 divided by 1. So you skip that element out. So we do not bijack 0 over 2 with anything. We then have another one, 0 over 3, and we don't want to bijack that with anything either. Uh, and then we've got uh, this number 1 over 2. That's a new one. So we want to... We want to put that in bijection, so we'll send 1 over 2 on to um, 3, okay? And you continue on, and basically again, it'll be more complicated in this case, but again, if you give me any rational, I could tell you in principle uh, which natural number it will go on to, and every fraction will have a natural number it goes on to, because eventually every fraction will appear in this table, and uh, this diagonal method will mean that eventually you get to it, and that, um, that idea there, that um, diagonal method is uh, known as Cantor diagonalization. Uh, so I will just write that. Um, Cantor diagonalization, or Cantor diagonal argument this is. Can Cantor diagonalization. Okay, uh, so that's the proof that the rational numbers are uh, a countable set. So they satisfy that property. What we want to now show is that they are dense within uh, the um, uh, the real numbers. And again, I will refer you to my video on Dedekind cuts, uh, because in the video on Dedekind cuts, what I show you is that between any two real numbers, there is always a rational number. So, basically, if we draw the real line here, and you take any point x, which is a real number, and uh, you draw an epsilon ball, an epsilon open ball, this should be, so an epsilon neighbourhood. So this is a ball around the point x, 
of uh, radius epsilon, so an open ball. Uh, so that is defined to be all points y, which are an element of the set x, such that the distance between x and y is less than epsilon. Okay, uh, and basically what you have to show is that for all epsilon, uh, if to, for, for the x to be a limit point of s, you have to show that for all epsilon greater than zero, uh, there exists a little s, uh, let's say that it's a function of epsilon, uh, which is an element of this set uh, big S, so the set of rationals, so I might as well replace that with the set of rationals, uh, such that uh, s epsilon, uh, is an element of this open ball. So what I need to prove uh, is of size epsilon, sorry, is that uh, within, you give me whatever epsilon you like, there will be a rational number within there. Uh, so basically, the way that you would do that is you'd say, okay, um, consider the uh, other real number, which is uh, this number here, which is x plus epsilon. Basically, using the proof that I showed in the Dedekind cut videos, uh, there will be a rational number between x and x plus epsilon. So if I zoom this up a bit, here's x and here's x plus epsilon. So there will be some rational number in between there, and basically that rational number will be forced to be within uh, this epsilon ball. So there will, whatever, whatever epsilon you take, there will always be a rational number within that ball. Uh, so all real numbers uh, are limit points for the set of rationals. So the rationals is dense within the real numbers. The rationals is also uh, countable. Uh, so uh, the metric space R with the Euclidean metric is a um, is a um, separable metric space. Metric space. Okay. So let's see another example, a related example, which is the um, complex numbers. Um, in fact, actually, we'll do that in the next video, so uh, we'll leave it here for this video.